The natural environment is in a, a degree of balance. When we start disturbing that balance, going in and cutting down large swaths of forest, uh, coming in contact with, with these species that we have not been in contact with before, we're exposed to their diseases. Ebola is a virus uh, that can be really devastating uh, for both humans and, and great apes. West Africa is currently facing the worst uh, Ebola epidemic uh, to date, with over 1,300 people dead and climbing. Uh, to put that in perspective, the, the largest one prior to this uh, had killed roughly 500 people. Currently, there is no cure for Ebola. Uh, there is no vaccine. There are no drugs uh, that will cure it. If we can determine where Ebola is circulating in wildlife populations, we can use that information to inform the human health community. It's believed that certain species of fruit bats are natural reservoirs for Ebola virus, meaning that the, the virus survives in them, but they don't get ill. We've got an ongoing uh, project in Central Africa where we are capturing, uh, sampling, and releasing fruit bats, looking at uh, the presence of Ebola virus over a period of time. We determined that wildlife could survive Ebola by finding antibodies both humans and other animals, when they're exposed to a, a virus or a bacterium or, or other, other uh, pathogen, they produce antibodies, and those antibodies protect them the next time that they're exposed to that same disease. Normally, um, one tests for antibodies in the blood, but antibodies are produced in other parts of the body, including in the gastrointestinal tract, so in the stomach and the intestines. For most wildlife populations, it's pretty difficult to get a blood sample. It's stressful for the animal, it's potentially dangerous for the handlers, especially if those animals already have Ebola virus. We were racking our brains on how else we could obtain those antibodies. For example, with, with a gorilla. Gorillas are notoriously elusive, um, particularly where they've been under hunting pressure. So when they hear humans, they smell humans in the area, they tend to flee. It makes them extremely difficult to find. Their feces, however, they always leave behind. This new technique allows us to simply collect a fecal sample and test that fecal sample for antibodies. For us, this is a very exciting uh, development. You potentially can get a much uh, larger sample in a shorter period of time, and it allows you to do it over a geographic area that is much, much larger. One organization can't do this alone. WCS works in partnership with uh, many other researchers, many other institutions to do this work. The more we know about a disease, the more we can try to prepare for it. The more we can determine uh, where it's coming from, try to modify people's behavior to minimize their coming in contact with the disease, the better we can design vaccines or potentially treatments against it. <laughs>